Hey there, Hillary here from Old World Home. Welcome back to my channel. In this video, I wanna kinda of talk with you about how to have that sort of homesteading, farmhouse, natural living lifestyle when you don't have a farm and you don't have a homestead, but you want to implement more of those natural elements into your home, into your life. So these are some things that we have done or would like to do in the future. All of these tips, by no means do you need to implement all of them all at once. I think if you just start little by little and you try to do one thing at a time and get used to doing that one thing, then the habit starts to build and you can add on one more thing. Trying to do all of it all at once is just a recipe for burnout and disaster and saying, oh, this is too much, I could never do all of that. And you don't have to do all of it. You can start one thing at a time. Cooking from scratch is a really, really simple way to start on that natural lifestyle. Cooking from scratch, what do I mean? I mean using whole food ingredients, like buying the meat in its whole state, buying vegetables, buying your own spices, and just putting a meal together with simple ingredients. It is going to be so much better for your body, for your health, for your wallet, because it's gonna be so much cheaper to buy individual ingredients versus prepackaged things, and you can really control what is going into it. Likewise, you can make your own bread. I know this has been wildly popular in the internet world and just the world at large over the past couple of years, but it is so, so simple to make your own bread. There are an infinite amount of recipes. I love a one hour bread recipe. I have talked about it over and over on my channel. I'll link it down below. It's just yeast and flour and water and just a couple other things and you can literally have a loaf of bread on your table in one hour. Or you can go the sourdough route, which is something I have never done and I really want to do. I feel very intimidated by it. I don't know why. Keeping it alive basically has kind of held me back, but that is something I want to do and something you could do as well. My next tip is to buy local as much as you can. So I'm very grateful we live in New Jersey it is the garden state so we do have a lot of farms and just preserve farmland and places where you can buy produce and meat and eggs and things like that not too far from us I do like to pick up local eggs where I can our family goes through a ton of eggs and which is a whole nother subject about getting chickens that is another thing you could do is have chickens they don't need a ton of land it's something we I have tossed around the idea of doing it for a long time and maybe we will maybe that is something we will do in the future but when i can get local free-range eggs for anywhere from five dollars a dozen down to maybe even three dollars a dozen i actually passed a farm stand the other day they had a legit full-size refrigerator on the curb and you could go and just put your money in the drop box and take some eggs. So I got four dozen right there, but I can also get local eggs even at my Aldi or you know, even at our local grocery stores, we will have also farm fresh eggs, which is a great option to swap out from you know factory produced white eggs to something that's more natural and local is a really easy swap and something that is going to taste so much better and be so much better for you we've also started trying to buy more meat locally and in bulk which is another tip for having that more natural homesteading lifestyle is just to have more on hand because when you buy these items individually say you go to a specialty grocery store and you want to buy local free range you know chicken for example it's gonna be super expensive because they're you know it's really highly packaged up into this individual little thing but if you buy straight from the farm and you buy a lot all at once you are gonna save so much money you're again you're getting quality products you are supporting a farm so that is something that we have tried to do a friend of ours shared with us a farm that she knew of that does different drop-off locations so you can go and shop from their website from their farm and they will bring it to you at different locations at different times so we did that recently we got a whole ton of farm fresh pork products and some um, cheese we got from them as well raw cheddar and we actually got 10 different types of cheese it was awesome and we also got a little bit of raw milk which i have 
been very curious about so we did pick that up and it was delicious so I don't know that's also something that's on my radar um, but you can find these types of co-ops just google it just search something like organic chicken near me or organic eggs near me free range you know meat near me something like that and things will pop up another great tip is to just ask around talk to people in your community from your church from your library from your anywhere in your community you can get involved in facebook pages local community groups things like that where again people are in the know they live in your community they know people and a lot of times these local smaller farms may not advertise on a big website and you may need to just drive by and check it out for yourself. That is another blessing that we have a lot around us are just little local stands where you can pick up things like honey. Thankfully, none of my kids have seasonal allergies, but by you know incorporating that into their diet and ours, honey is just so, so good for you. So I love being able to find it locally. There's just so many options now, just with the internet being so vast, no matter where you live, you can have access to these farms and again be supporting local farmers and be getting some high quality products even if you can't raise them yourself or grow them yourself which leads us into things like vegetables and fruits things like farmers markets where you can go and buy whatever the local farmers have in season and something that again i talked about with the meat is just the buying in bulk aspect if you can buy and then bring it home and either can it or freeze it you can really preserve it for the long haul especially if it's somewhere that isn't close to you if you can go out and buy a lot all at once you're getting a lot of times a bulk discount and you're getting again peak freshness that you can then come home and preserve i'm not that big on canning personally i would rather utilize my freezer i joke that my freezer is like my time machine so we have the freezer in our, with our refrigerator we have a backup refrigerator and freezer in our garage and we also have a deep freezer in our basement you can get things and either blanch them and freeze them or something like say garden tomatoes you can roast them down with olive oil salt and pepper cool it and then just put it in a jar and jar it and can it or you can just freeze it in like flat you know ziploc bags and freeze them and you can have garden fresh tomatoes and peppers and things like that in the dead of winter so that is something that i really want to do more of but even things like produce if you have any farms around you where you can pick your own that's another way to get a really great discount and even last time we went peach picking this past summer there was a family there and their license plate was from a totally different state and they had come to go peach picking and they got tons and tons of peaches which i'm assuming they're gonna bring back with them and either enjoy right then or you know preserve in some way so if you have a, a little space that you can stick a deep freezer you can preserve things for so much longer and now more than ever it is so much easier to get your hands on natural products you don't have to necessar necessarily go out to a health food store you can get so much either at your local store even places like walmart or aldi there is such a greater variety of options that are natural that are more whole food based and are affordable it doesn't have to break the bank to cook more from scratch and to use more natural ingredients yes it's going to cost a little bit more but i feel like if you balance it out and you're cooking more at home it is so much better for your health so you're going to save on those health care costs which is huge you know you can offset the cost of the higher quality foods in other ways and that's just a personal choice what you find to be more valuable but if you're watching this video i'm thinking that you are trying to incorporate more natural aspects into your life into your home and it doesn't have to break the bank i remember back in the day i used to shop a lot on vita cost i don't even know if that's still a website i haven't even gone on to use it in such a long time because i am able to find products more you know at my stores or 
And let's face it, I use Amazon a lot. But there's also things like Thrive Market, which I've never used, but I know that it's another online grocery store where you can just have things delivered right to you. And once you kind of stock up on more of these natural ingredients, they do last a while and you can just really incorporate them daily into your family's diet. As far as growing our own produce, again, this is on my list of things that I would like to do. I am a mom of four. I have very much been in just like the little kid season of life and very much just me at home during the day with them. My husband works a full-time job outside of the home. So to build a garden and tend a garden just isn't something that I have had the capacity for. It is something I would love to do. I just know we need to kind of put in the preliminary work of getting it started and you know protecting the produce because we have a lot of natural predators. We have deer, we have you know birds and bunnies and groundhogs and everything like that. So it's just Maybe it's just a mental hurdle I need to get over, or it's just the actual physical effort of establishing the garden. But my parents do have an amazing garden. It is humongous. They have so many different types of fruits and vegetables that we are so blessed to be able to go and glean from. They have grown it for us, for their children to enjoy and to come and their grandkids to come and pick whatever they want. So that's a huge blessing. And I need to be a little more proactive with really taking all those to good use and preserving things that we can use in the future. Another option is a CSA, which is a Community Supported Agriculture, I think is what it stands for. And it basically is you partnering with a local farm and you basically pay into whatever produce they have seasonally. But you basically get a box to your door every week or so and it will have the produce that they have grown for that week and again something i would be interested in doing just to again support local agriculture get a little bit of different produce maybe then my parents have available or things that are just fresh like you cannot get more fresh and local and quality than something that has been grown you know down the street or again even if you do have to drive a little ways out to go and pick it up i think it's totally worth it some other foods that you can make yourself and sort of have that homesteading um, types of foods in your home are things like sauerkraut which is something we have started making and i love it it's so good it is so easy it's literally just cabbage and salt and then you can add any spices you want or you can just do cabbage and salt and it ferments on your counter for about a week to a couple weeks depending on how sour you want it and it is so good it's so good for you it's great for your gut likewise you can do things like pickles you can ferment pickles you know cucumbers and make your own you could do things like make your own yogurt which i have never done something i would be interested in doing we go through a lot of yogurt or making your own jam when you do do any pick your own berries or things like that you can make your own jam which is pretty simple the other great thing about cooking from scratch is you can control how much sugar you are putting into your diet which i did a whole video about how i quit sugar for 30 days and now i'm just sort of living you know the after effects of it and i have just realized how much sugar is in everything and how negative it can affect you and your children and it just is not something that we need a lot of in our diets so by making your own jelly making your own you know different things, all different types of foods, whether savory or sweet, just have a lot of sugar in them. So by cooking from scratch, you can really control that. Now, as far as that, you know, homesteading natural lifestyle in the home, there are a few things that we have done for years and will continue to do. Things like using less plastics with our food. So for our children, I gave up plastic, you know, dishes and cups for them a very long time ago when I had my first daughter i switched over to either stainless steel plates and you know little like serving cups and snack cups and things like that and then just regular glassware for their drinking cups or just a regular ceramic mug that they'll drink out of and of course you can do your own research and do whatever works best for you but i was never comfortable with reheating food or putting hot food on plastic and serving it to my children. So that was an easy swap. We have had these enamel lemon plates for 
forever. They have lasted so long and they're adorable and they're perfectly kid friendly. They can drop them on the floor and they're not gonna break. And even something as simple as switching to cloth napkins, it's gonna reduce waste. It is, you know, a reusable product. It's so easy. I'm already doing laundry every day. It's no big deal to throw in a few extra napkins and let's face it they look adorable in a basket on your table and finally your cleaning products that is a really easy way something that we have done for years now is just to really limit the amount of cleaning products we're using in our home making things ourselves really simply with just water vinegar and dawn that's basically my multi-purpose spray that i use on pretty much everything i do use some specialty cleaning products for certain tasks but by far i have limited our cleaning products to a very small amount and it keeps our house just as clean it's less waste it's so much more affordable and it just helps keep our house clean and fresh and running daily so thank you all so much for watching let me know down in the comments where you fall in this kind of homesteading lifestyle i know some of you are you know all into it you grow things yourself you have your own animals and maybe some of you live in a city and you don't have access to farms and farm stands so let me know down in the comments i would love to just encourage you if this is something that you are trying to add more to your life and i just thank you all so much for being here thank you for watching if you are new to my channel be sure to stick around and subscribe and i'll be talking to you soon take care guys